Hello and welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me. Now you may remember a couple of weeks ago I had a very distinguished guest, um, Dr. Michael Norton, and we were talking about people stuck in prison who were innocent. And in particular we were highlighting one case, Clive Freeman. Well, uh, I'd like to catch up on all of that. We have a petition uh, as well that you may be interested in taking part in. Now, for legal reasons, which seems to me completely stupid and, and unusual, that uh, for a, a, a gentleman inside, shall we say, cannot appear on the show like this, can't even have his photograph taken. We may be able to find out a bit more. However, Dr. Michael Norton and a few other distinguished people who we'll find out in a second are on the line. Clive is in the room, but you won't actually be able to see him. So let's just switch over to... Hello, Michael. Hello, Richard. Thanks for having us back on again. No, it's my pleasure. Um, can you just tell us where you are? Because you're in a, a, in a curious location by the looks of that room. Well, we're in a, a boardroom, which is somewhere in Bristol. Uh, Clive's in Lay Hill Prison now, HMP Lay Hill. Uh, this is the third day he's had out in 35 years to meet with the campaign team and there's been Zoom conferences with his lawyers and stuff like that and other people who are trying to support his campaign. There's ha uh, Hannah Pickup on the end. She's a student at, Hello, the, at Hi, the University of Bristol. She's studying law. She's a third year. And she's part of, uh, as part of her excellent curricular studies, she works as a volunteer on my project, Empowering the Innocent. And she's been researching Clive's case this year and has written an article about it and presented her work at a, a national conference. Wow, uh, what, a, what an amazing opportunity, I would say. I mean, in an unfortunate circumstances, of course. Yeah, absolutely. It's been brilliant to be part of the team. I feel like as soon as Michael told me about this, I just wanted to kind of do whatever I could to... Yeah, yeah no, brilliant. And there's Terry sat next to Hannah, and Terry was uh, somebody who met Clive in prison, uh, and then he ended up looking into Clive's case papers, um, and then has devoted himself to this case over the last ten years. So Terry's really the one who's driving the campaign to raise awareness about Clive's innocence and the way that he's just trapped in prison, and and possibly if you remember last time. Um, is likely to die in prison. And it's hard to say that while Clive is just sat off camera. Um, yes, I can I can well believe that it must be awful. Uh, well, well done to Terry for making this um, an, an issue and that uh, I'm only too pleased to sort of include it in my show for freedom and justice. So yeah, well, it's, it's just morally correct uh, when you know the details of the case and if you didn't try to do at least something to to help Clive overturn this wrongful conviction, then you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be a man. No, no, absolutely. Um, it, 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 to do the right thing these days is, uh, it seems a hard thing for a lot of people to do, and and you're showing um, immense um, honesty to do this, and, and it's what most people should do. And then you, you know Aaron. Aaron's the person who's kind of driving the media campaign um, for Clive Freeman. And then Clive is just off camera, as I said. Um, yeah. And, you know, Clive is allowed to actually speak, but he's not allowed to be seen. Well, so let's talk. Let's talk to the man then. Clive, hello to you. Hello. Uh, and I'm happy to talk to you. Thank you. I'm so sorry we can't see you. I'm sure the, the audience would love to see you. I've, I've actually said hello off camera you know, off recording, 35 years. This is your third day release. I, I, I find that incredibly difficult to believe that in all this time, particularly in your case, that you uh, are so restricted. What's it been like? Well, um, to me, uh, prison is a, it's a living hell, really. I mean, uh, to be in prison for something that uh, you, you, you're completely innocent of, and then to fight your case over so many years, I've been buried away in outside prisons like Whitemore and uh, Swaleside and Lay Hill, not, not even in a central place. And all my loved ones and family are 8,000 miles away. Um, I've got uh, grandchildren, 22 years old, I've never even seen them. The last time I saw my daughter was uh, 30, 36 years ago. So 
you can just imagine, um, you, you know, all my loved ones are, are, are so far away in a different country. And when I was expecting my first appeal in, in 1997, my wife and my daughter uh, were, were preparing to come over to England to be with me because I was convinced that they, we would win the appeal. And the government refused, the British government refused to uh, allow my wife a visa because she holds a South African passport. Uh, so the, the last time I saw my wife was uh, on the 2nd of uh, uh, March, 1987. And so sadly, she died uh, at the end of... Uh, um, uh, end of uh, March, in, uh, end of uh, 1998, and I was married to her for uh, 32 years and 135 days. And uh, the reason that I'm still in prison, really, is because I made a pledge to her because this wrongful conviction w had a big stigma on all of my family. And I promised her, I said, Aura, that was her name, I said, I will never leave prison until I'm rightly exonerated. And I made that pledge to her, and that is the reason I'm still in prison. Because if I had jumped through the hoops that the parole board put me and the prison put me, I would have been gone in 2001. So that's a, I, I, that's a, that's a huge commitment to honesty and truth there, Clive. Um, how, have you, how have you found the additional time then that you've had to endure? It's, it's, well, it's a living hell for me. I'm not a gregarious person. And I think Terry, without meeting Terry, I would my my sad situation would never have been uh, uh, brought forward. But um, I I have not much in common with uh, the prisoners that I'm in uh, in the in the prison that I'm in now. I mean, I'm from an uh, agricultural background in Rhodesia. I was ranching and 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 uh, big scale farming. Um, so uh, you, you know local prisoners, I have nothing in common with them. So very, very few people I talk to. I mean, in a week, I can go three or four days without saying a word to, to anybody else. Uh, so it, prison has been terrible for me, especially knowing what I'm up against. Yes, I can, I can well believe that. And from going from an outdoor life to 35 years inside, do, do you get much time outside? Well, I'm in an open prison now where I do get some time outside. Um, but, you know, once you're outside, you, you, you're mixing with other people, which uh, doesn't really suit me, really. I mean, uh, 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 I suppose uh, you can put me in the box of being a loner because I, I'm, well, I'm a foreigner, really, in this country. And, uh, and uh, um, when I was in other prisons, I had... Um, people that I, that I could associate with better, really, because I'm a horse lover and, uh, and, and a racing fanatic, and I could speak to people about, you know, the horse situation. But, you know, in, in the prison where I am now, you know, there's, there's nothing like that. And, and I understand that you're not, uh, you're not terribly healthy at the moment. No, I'm not healthy at all, really. Um, uh, I don't want to enlarge on it, but uh, I do think my days are very limited now. And, that, and, and do you think there's a chance? I mean, that there is the petition. I'll get uh, Michael to tell us about the petition just to remind everybody. Um, but do you think there's a chance that you will finally get away from the prison and have some form of uh, life outside? Well, I, as I, I promised my wife, I made a pledge, and very, very unfortunately, which, which actually affects me every day of my life, I made two pledges to my wife. The first one I broke uh, because I only once in my life I I broke my promise of uh, of my uh, of my marriage vows uh, and and uh, that has affected me all throughout my life. So this pledge I will never break. So um, you know the, the, it looks like that I will will end my life in prison. That's that's a very hard thing to hear from somebody who's outside and is enjoying life. I, I wish you so much uh, luck and I hope that things are not too grim. Uh, Michael, could you tell us a little bit about the petition? I've got to uh, head off in a second, unfortunately, but could you just give us a quick uh, once over on what the petition is about? Thank you, Richard. Um, 
yeah, I think what's what's really preventing Clive and people like Clive, I mean, Clive's the, the longest serving prisoner maintaining innocence, but there are others. What's um, preventing Clive from overturning his conviction is that the Criminal Case Review Commission, the body which has been set up to investigate alleged wrongful mm -hmm. convictions, um, it, it doesn't believe that um, Clive has a real possibility of overturning his conviction. So this body which was set up to investigate claims of innocence and try to get to the truth of claims of innocence, it's, it's failing because of a clause that was put into that uh, legislation, which means that it cannot look into Clive's case to find out the truth. Now, we, like a public inquiry, you might say, what we do with our project is we look into cases um, akin to a public inquiry to find out if the claim of innocence is truthful or not. And we get all of the documentation, all of the reports, and we've even commissioned further forensic um, reports to be done on cases that I've worked on. And in many of the cases, we find out that the people who are applying to us and writing to us are not innocent, and it's quite easy to establish that. But the Criminal Cases Review Commission doesn't do that. Um, but in Clive's case, it's one of the easiest cases we've ever worked on, because even the person who, who actually gave evidence against Clive in his trial, who said that Mr. Hardy um, was murdered. In the first two post-mortems, he said that Mr. Hardy died of natural causes, and he suspiciously uh, changed his opinion for his third report. And now there's nine people, global experts in forensic pathology, have been asked now to give a view on Clive's case. All nine of them, 100% of the people who've been, who've been invited to, to look into Clive's case, have all said that Mr. Hardy was not murdered and Clive Freeman could not have murdered him in the method that was claimed. So we've got this petition now, which is trying to say the CCRC needs to be reformed so that he can look into cases like Clive's to find out whether or not Clive is innocent or not innocent, whether or not there is any truthfulness or validity to the claim of innocence. And so we're asking people to sign that petition. We need 10,000 signatures um, to get a government response. Um, since I was on your programme talking to you about Clive's case and other things, uh, there's been a pretty good response, so we thank you for that, Richard. Um, but we need more signatures, 10,000 to get a response from the government, 100,000 will actually get as, as close to, to where we're trying to get to. Mm. But we understand now it may be a million signatures before this is debated in Parliament, which is what we're all aiming for. And Absolutely. It's, a big, it's a big target, but I think that, you know, in, in 20, more than 20 years of me working on alleged wrongful conviction cases, I've never worked on one which is as cut and dried as Clive's. And right. it's, I said earlier when we were talking that he's been supported by a Catholic priest called Father Hugh Sinclair. Now, Father Sinclair was a solicitor for 10 years before he became a Catholic priest. And he was involved in the exoneration of the Birmingham Six, the Guildford Four, the Tottenham Three, the East Ham Two, lots of other cases. And he's been side by side with Clive now for almost all of the 35 years that Clive's been in prison because he went through all the documentation and he believes that Clive is as innocent as the people in the other cases. Right. He's so, um, well, thank you for, for that. We, we will put the petition in the, in the description to this video. Um, but uh, I, unfortunately, I have to uh, disappear now. But thank you so much for coming back on the show and uh, telling us about it and good luck clive i hope um the next uh, few years are uh are more tolerable than they have been and and you're certainly well loved from the people there and i'm sure there's a lot of goodwill from my audience as well well thank you so much it's very nice to speak to you thank you you, thank you look after yourself so well, uh, so there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's, it's a terrible situation where justice cannot be properly carried out, that if you are innocent and by whatever means you've been put uh, into prison, that it's not working in your favour to be able to prove yourself. Please do look at the petition. It will be in the show notes uh, in the description. And I'll be back with uh, more interviews coming up. Until the next time, goodbye. <laughs>